introduce our two speakers today. First, Ethan um, Kerberg is a sustainability specialist for the city of Golden Valley. He graduated from St. Olaf College, interned at a renewable energy company, and completed a service year through Minnesota Green Corps before joining the city in 2022. He currently works on recycling and waste reduction, energy efficiency, electrification, climate resilience, and a variety of other sustainability initiatives. Ethan grew up in Golden Valley and is passionate about protecting the planet while making Golden Valley a greener, healthier, and more equitable community for everyone. And Andrea Cole, no, excuse me, no, <laughs> is a Golden Valley staff assistant. She is serving a one terms um, service term one-year service term with Minnesota Green Corps, which is a Minnesota Pollution Control Agency coordinating program training a new generation of environmental professionals. As a Green Corps member, Andrea assists city staff with environmental health-related projects and initiatives through community outreach, site assessments, and data collection and analysis. Following her service term, Andrea plans to pursue a graduate degree in environmental science and continue her work preserving and protecting Minnesota's ecosystems and communities. And with that, please welcome Ethan and Andrea. today. Uh, we're excited to be here um, talking about recycling and organics recycling in Golden Valley. Uh, we'll be talking kind of about each of the individual programs that the city offers through contract. Uh, we'll be talking about what kinds of materials can go in each of the waste streams um, and a little bit more about what's happening across the metro and across the state with uh, waste management. So let's kick things off. I think uh, probably a lot of us have heard about organics recycling in Golden Valley over the last few years. Um, so basically organics recycling is food, food soiled paper, and certified compostable products. Uh, and so it turns out there's a lot of this kind of material in our trash. Uh, up to one third of what we throw away that gets sent to landfill is some sort of organic waste that um, could be captured and turned into something better. So. Uh, by having organics recycling, we collect this material and it gets sent to a local commercial compost facility where it's broken down, it's turned into compost, which uh, then can be used in gardens as kind of a nutrient-rich soil amendment um, that we can use to grow more food. Uh, and so organics recycling is really considered one of the best opportunities to reduce what uh, we put in our trash and put it to better use so that it doesn't end up at a landfill. So here in Golden Valley, uh, we have uh, a contract with Republic Services to offer curbside organics recycling service to uh, one through four unit households. So larger apartment complexes may not have organics recycling, but if you're in a single family home, you for sure have the option to uh, do this program. So anytime you see the orange lidded carts out on the street, you know that that person is doing uh, organics recycling. Um, and so, you know, in your kitchen, you might have a little pail where you collect food scraps or other uh, organic material, and then you usually take that out to the curb. You can either put it in a compostable bag, you know, little green plastic looking bags that will break down into compost, or it might be kind of messy, but you can just put it straight in the cart as well. Uh, it might start to stink in the summer, but um, both are viable options. And then once that cart gets collected by the trucks, it gets sent down to uh, Shakopee, Minnewaukee, and Sioux community, SMSC, uh, down south of the metro. Uh, they have an organics recycling facility that takes it in, turns that organics recycling into compost, uh, and then sells it or gives it back to cities to use in landscaping projects, uh, construction projects, and other things like that. 
Golden Valley just had a free compost giveaway a few weeks ago over at uh, Hampshire Park uh, for residents to come by and grab a couple pails. We tried to get the word out. I know some people don't always hear about that, but uh, you can kind of see the full loop system there where you collect the organic material and then it can come right back to you to use uh, on your property. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to <laughs> Andrea for a little bit. She'll talk about why it is that we do this. So more specifically, why organics recycling, <laughs> thank you, I'm sure. Uh, organics recycling is beneficial. One of the, the biggest reasons why it's beneficial is it reduces landfill waste. When organic material is sent to a landfill, it decomposes and releases quite a bit of methane. So by doing organics recycling, you're able to cut back on methane emissions by pretty meaningful amount. It also improves soil and protects water by reducing the need for fertilizer, supports a local economy, decreases need for chemical fertilizers, um, and then it also turns food waste into biogas and manure. So what happens more specifically at an organics recycling facility? First, the organic material is spread into these long piles known as windrows, and then workers at the facility will drive this special arched machine over the windrows and it supplies the microorganisms with the oxygen needed to break down that organic waste. And with all of that microbial activity, it generates a lot of heat and so that heat is necessary to kill off the harmful pathogens that may be in <coughs> the organic material and then Really big tumblers with screens sort out the larger non-compostable items from the compost and then the final product is mostly given to contractors and landscapers. And then this is a photo of the, the windrows at a Shakopee. So uh, now the tough part, making sense of what can go where. Um, so uh, there's some materials at your tables too. I made sure to make some of that available. There's uh, Hennepin County has done a really good job putting together educational materials about recycling and organics recycling. So there's some organics recycling guides. There's some recycling guides, both paper and magnetic, if you want to stick one to your fridge or something, um, as well as a couple uh, brochures about businesses and multifamily. So. Uh, take a look at that organics recycling guide and see kind of the list of things that are accepted in the organics recycling collection. Um, for some of you who may do backyard compost, uh, you'll see a lot of similar items on there, you know, food scraps, banana peels, coffee grounds, things like that. Um, but what is kind of nice about having this uh, industrial sized curbside program is that things like uh, food soiled cardboard, like pizza boxes, or uh, dairy or bones or uh, you know BPI compostable products all of those things will break down when they may not break down in your backyard compost so um, it's a way to capture even more of that material and try to put it to better use uh, and so you know you can continue composting your backyard and in your garden if that's something you do but then some more of those items that you may not be able to get to break down you can uh, find this as an alternative um, so yeah, just running through it. All food, anything that was grown or edible or, you know, it's all organic material that will break down food soiled paper. Um, a few other kind of random ones like cotton balls, nail clippings, uh, all that stuff is organic, so it will break down. Uh, and the key here, when you're, when you're not sure about something that looks kind of plastic, uh, is to look for the certified BPI compostable logo. I believe it is shown on the organics recycling guide. It's that little green kind of rectangle that has the leaf on it. Um, most products that are compostable do a pretty good job of indicating that that has been certified as something that will break down. So uh, if you see that, you know you're good to put it in the organics recycling. Otherwise, it's probably just regular plastic and you should be putting that in your traditional recycling bin. A um, few things to run through on the unacceptable side. Uh, take off those produce stickers. Those are, you know, plastic. They've got adhesives on them. That's not really gonna to break down the process. They do not want you putting uh, pet waste in there. That's, uh, you know, not anything anyone wants to be using. Um, we've got, uh, you know, some more sanitary products. Um, the biggest thing that affects whether or not organics recycling can be used and processed is glass. 
because uh, if glass shatters and is broken down and gets into that compost, that's something that's never going to break down, right? That is hard, sharp material. People don't want to be digging around in their gardens with broken glass in there. So this is why it's important to make sure that you know what is supposed to go where. Um, plastic, you know, they, they do a good job of pulling some of those items out if people sort it wrong uh, down at the compost facility. But um, we can all do our best to try to make sure it all ends up at the right spot. Uh, moving on to mixed and traditional recycling. So this is typically like the blue bins that you'll see, blue or gray. Um, why is this collected? Well, uh, especially coming out of the pandemic, we know how much cardboard, how much, uh, how many takeout containers and plastics and glasses that we use. Um, it's again a way to reduce consumption of fossil fuels by not needing to use uh, you know, raw materials, you can repurpose and reuse some of that material that's already been used. Uh, it creates a ton of jobs in the area, conserves some of the natural resources, and again, protects the environment. Um, and here in Golden Valley, again, a uh, contract with Republic Services to collect that, and they bring it over to their uh, material recovery facility over in Minneapolis. Um, I was able to tour it a little bit earlier this year. Uh, we did a waste audit with them. Uh, and. Turns out Golden Valley is doing a really good job of sorting our recycling. Uh, I think last year we had uh, what they call like a contamination rate, you know, amount of trash and food waste that gets put in recycling. Last year it was 8%, this year it's down to 6%. Um, so people are doing a good job of knowing what's supposed to go where. Uh, again, mentioned uh, blue lid cart, uh, collected every other week by Republic. Uh, it's single sort, you might hear different kinds of systems where you need to put glass in one container and cardboard in another. We're lucky enough to just kind of have it be all in one. It makes it a lot easier for folks. Uh, and then at the facility is where they sort it out both manually and with sensors and robots and all sorts of magic that occurs <laughs> over there. Um, one, one thing that's kind of been pushed or talked about uh, is whether or not recycling is actually effective. Um, you know, there's a lot of plastic waste that's occurring across the United States and across the world. Uh, Minnesota actually is one of the better places in the world to do recycling. We have local markets that will accept a lot of the materials or has ways to connect with markets that will take the material that gets uh, bundled up and sent out. Um, Minnesota has laws on the books uh, prohibiting recyclables from being put in the landfill. Uh, haulers need to reach a certain threshold of recyclable material collected or else uh, they have to pay fines. Um, and so there's a lot of incentives here in Minnesota for things that are collected for recycling to actually be put to good use. Um, as you can see here, uh, about uh, three-fourths of the recycling for Eureka, another recycling group uh, processed, was sold for re reuse in Minnesota. 94% of it stayed in the Midwest, so again, those really strong local markets. Um, and in Minnesota, it's a huge job creator too, uh, 78,000 jobs. So um, you can see kind of the thing on the right there, they're trying to make it a fun kind of marketing communications campaign for, for kids and community members to uh, learn more about how recycling works, how recycling actually exists, and uh, the good that it does here in Minnesota. Um, most, this is just some more information about where things end up. A lot of the plastics uh, that we have here go to Idaho, Ohio, and Wisconsin to be remade into new bottles. Uh, detergent containers uh, are made into outdoor products, so like benches and uh, yard furniture. Um, paper and cardboard, again, repurposed into new paper products. Uh, and glass is sent to Shakopee to make new bottles. This is my time to uh, give Golden Valley some kudos for being one of the better uh, cities in the metro when it comes to participation in both organics recycling and mixed recycling. Um, we started at about 45% the first year. I think a lot of people gave it a first shot and see, saw how they could do it. Uh, we're down to about 41% in 2023, which is still among the highest in the metro. I think we've kind of plateaued there and we're working on uh, some new initiatives with our environmental commission to get the word out and get some more folks signed up. Um, and mixed recycling, 97% uh, last year, around 95%. Again, there's a little variation in numbers and metrics that get collected, but hard to get much better than that. So 
I know some of the more mature organics recycling programs like Minneapolis, St. Louis Park, Bloomington, a few other cities, they're hovering around that 40, 45% too. And we're one of the newer ones on the scene. So uh, it's, it's a good sign. People in Golden Valley want to be, want to be doing this. Um, what happens to everything that isn't recycled? So again, things that may end up in the recycling that aren't recyclable or things that are just put in the trash. Um, a lot of it is landfilled, especially here in Golden Valley. We don't have a lot of haulers that take uh, material to the incinerator. Uh, but there is an incinerator in downtown Minneapolis. You may see it, it's right by Target Field. Uh, it's called the HERC, the Hennepin Energy Recovery uh, Center. Hennepin County is talking about what the future of that facility will look like in the years to come. But uh, as of right now, it's a way for them to manage waste uh, that doesn't go to the landfill and incinerate it, turn it into ash, and then bury that instead. Um, this is the waste hierarchy. This is what you'll see on uh, MPCA's website and in some of their policies about how we should think about managing waste. So on the far end, you see landfilling. We, we don't want to just put it in our ground, let it leach into uh, the soil and our water. And on the far other end is reducing, right? don't create the waste in the first place, just reduce what you consume. And then you'll see a bunch in the middle. So uh, instead of landfilling, some of that uh, is landfill with gas recovery. So we talked about the methane emissions that uh, get produced earlier on. Some of that can be collected and then used as biogas. Uh, one step above that is the waste to energy. That's the HERC downtown, incinerating waste instead of just burying it in the ground. Above that is organics recycling. Uh, we can collect some of that organic waste put it to good use. Uh, recycling is one about that, reuse and re reduce. So um, just a good way to kind of think about the different systems at play and how, how we might uh, create a healthier environment. Okay, plastic, this is a big one. Uh, plastic is a tough one because uh, it's expensive to collect, it's really cheap to make. Um, and it's exceptionally hard to sort. So uh, I know we were looking a little bit earlier at the number of plastics on <coughs> their takeout containers and on the cups and trying to make sense of all that. Um, I know one of the, the common things that they say is number one, number two, and number five plastics are, are recyclable if you just want a really straightforward one. But again, that's where it's worth looking at the recycling guide uh, for better guidance about what kinds of containers <coughs> excuse me, are accepted. Uh, plastic does degrade after a couple of uses, which is why so much of it gets created uh, just to begin with instead of being recycled uh, because it's so cheap. The tricky thing about sending it to the material recovery facility is that if there are plastic bags, you think about that soft plastic, that can get tangled up in some of the sorters and the conveyor belts and uh, just the sorting systems that they have. And so making sure that the right kinds of plastics are going in there is how we can keep that working well. For some reason, the weird one that they haven't figured out a way to recycle it is black plastic. Just the way that the sensors work at the sorting facility, they just can't pick that up yet for some reason. So we're all hoping that they figure that out since I know a lot of takeout containers will have like the clear plastic on top and the black plastic on bottom. Mm -hmm. And so only half of it is recyclable and the other half isn't. So. Uh, it's very confusing, which is why they have these handy guides for us to, to check. I'll hand it back over to Andrea to talk a little bit more about uh, more proactive ways that we can think about reducing and reusing uh, some of our waste. So one of the best ways to reuse or reduce your waste is to go to Hennepin County has fix-it clinics. I think they happen about once a month around around the metro area and you're able to bring in items and they have a number of helpers who are have specific skill sets that are able to help you repair technology or mend a hole in a garment or put on a button. Uh, you can also donate items to thrift stores and donation centers. There's Shop for Change, Prism, and there's also Arc Value Village can be really helpful to shop local farmers markets. There's Market in the Valley in Golden Valley, the Minneapolis Farmers Market and the Mill City Farmers Market are also really great. 
and there are Facebook groups called uh, By Nothing, which can be really great. There are a lot in Minnesota, so you're able to get items for free. And you can also do bulk buying at co-ops or other bulk buy stores. Some more specific ways, reusable cups and containers are great. You can get cloth produce bags. And on the, in the image, there are beeswax wraps that can be really helpful for sandwiches. And uh, also other ways, you can check the air filter in your car and replace tea bags with loose leaf teas and also reduce your use of paper. Some other ways to give household items new life, you can turn old clothing into clean cleaning rags, reuse newspaper as wrapping paper, and use glass jars for bulk buying indoor herb gardens and leftovers. And then the next Fix It Clinic in Hennepin County is in St. Louis Park on June 8th. And they're really popular, so I recommend getting there early. <laughs> no, they're super cool. If you haven't been to one yet, they're definitely worth checking out. Andrea said, like, if you have old clothing or old technology that you just don't know how to use, uh, um, old appliances, they've, they've got a, a good group of people that can help you give that new life instead of just having to throw it out. Are those volunteers that are there, or are they staff members? Absolutely, yeah, I think it's volunteers. Oh. They, they do have some Hennepin County staff uh, there at the event, but, hmm. yeah. She mentioned tea bags. Are tea bags do they go into the garbage or do they go into the compost? You're going to hear this a lot. It depends. Uh, <laughs> uh, I knew if they had to put yeah. metal on it, it right. went into the uh, garbage. But if right. it's no metal, it should be able to go compost. It should be. Uh, some some of the tea bags, the the bag itself is actually like a plastic mesh instead of like uh, cotton or uh, something else. So it depends. It's, <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I, I wish I had a straightforward answer for you. Yeah. A couple of things to add to your list that we're doing is sure. we take newspapers to uh, Humane Society because they oh, yeah. use them for their animals. And we also take um, shopping bags of plastic mm -hmm. to like the Humane Society because they use them for food banks. Yeah. And so those help Absolutely. reuse too. Oh, no, those are both great ideas. If it's, you know, ways we can share materials across organizations who need them, that's great. Quick question. Um, the percentage of the organic composting, yeah. is that just through the cities, people that, that sign up? So are there people, does that count people who are privately contracting mm -hmm. with uh, garbage, with waste haulers? Sure, are you, you're talking about the in gold value of participation yeah, rate? Yeah, like we're at 41% right now. Yeah. Is that including people who might privately contract with, with waste haulers? Uh, so they shouldn't be privately contracting unless they're a business or Commercial, that number is just eligible households. So, like I mentioned, the one through four plex housing are eligible for the contract. And so, of those, 41 ish percent of people are doing it. Um, I know some businesses, some multifamily properties actually ended up doing uh, organics recycling. They aren't shown on that number. Um, but because we have a city contract, uh, there shouldn't be private garbage haulers that are also offering. Organics recycling. I mean, otherwise people. you're paying twice for it. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So I know there was a little confusion earlier with one of the haulers sending some info out, but um, hopefully we got that taken care of. Yeah, what's the difference between biodegradable and compostable? Right. Um, so biodegradable, theoretically, a lot of things are biodegradable just over a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. Like if they're, they're going to degrade in, you know, like plastic will break down over the course of thousands of years, but it's not compostable. You can't like turn it into, you know, compost in a short amount of time. So you'll often see biodegradable thrown around as this sort of eco-friendly term, but it can mean so many different things. Whereas compostable, you know, is made out of organic material and will break down quickly and isn't going to be uh, a chemical leachate into anything else. Can I actually have yeah. question here? Um, you had listed here as non, um, non compostable is grease or oil. And I'm assuming that must be non uh, oil is, is organic. Mm -hmm. So why would it be? Yeah, I think it's. 
a lot of these things too, it's just the amount of stuff that gets collected, right? Like I think uh, like yard waste is something that gets mixed with uh, food waste and everything like that to create compost, but they don't want yard waste going directly into organic recycling. I think uh, grease and stuff like that is going to be in the food that we eat, so that's fine to put in there. They just don't want bottles upon bottles of oil going in there that just aren't going to break down in the same way as everything else. Um, I don't have a, a great answer for that. I just know that it, it can mess up the way that the balance uh, of all that works. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got time for one more question. One more question. Um, tell me a little bit about how the city itself is embracing um, organics and recycling, and are we able to, to do all of this in the, the city facilities that we have? Yes, that is something that we are always working and doing better at. Uh, you'll notice we have uh, organic recycling in the back of the room here. Uh, it is often a matter of how well the people in those spaces utilize these different containers. We're working on trying to improve labeling while keeping it still kind of attractive to whatever space wants to have them. Um, we have organic recycling over at City Hall and in all of our maintenance buildings. Um, we've attempted to do it in the parks here and there, but uh, Again, kind of with the pet waste and with a lot of the events that occur at different parks and shelters, uh, they're just, it, it's an education thing. We all need to learn how to do this better and teach each other. And when it gets contaminated, none of it goes to the place that we want it to at all. It ends up getting landfill. So uh, sometimes it's better to not offer it if you know all of it's just going to be going to the landfill anyway. But um, we're trying to get the word out. Golden Valley's doing a good job and we're always looking to do better. You need an educator. Peggy, Peggy's amazing. Absolutely. and does a great job with this group. She slaps our hands and everything. You tell us exactly what needs to go where. Thank you, Peggy. You know. <laughs> says it's a number five box. All right. Recyclable. Is that recyclable? Everybody give me my hand.